There will be quite a few times that we will need to insert annotations in our drawings. The first thing that we will learn is how to create texts. In the open drawing, we see the floor plan of a house's first floor. Let's say that I wish to write underneath the floor plan the words first floor. To do that, I am going to use the text tool. The text tools can be found in the annotation panel of the home ribbon. When I click on the arrow under the text icon, two options appear, the multi-line text and the single line text. With the single line tool, we specify the height and the orientation of the text before we start typing and after that, we can only edit the text content. On the contrary, the multi-line text tool provides more edit options for the appearance of the text, not to mention that, as its name indicates, it can create multiple rows too. So between the two, I am going to choose the multi-line text for obvious reasons. The first thing I should do once the command is active is to click somewhere in the drawing area to specify the first corner of the text frame. So I will hover the cursor on the lower left end point of the wall and once the reference line appears, I will move down on it and click to specify the first corner. Next, I have to click to specify the opposite corner. So I will move the cursor lower on the right and click again. This is exactly how I would create a rectangle. The second time I click, the text frame appears and so does the text editor ribbon. I will type the phrase first floor. As you can see, the letters S and T are not in superscript. In addition, the letters are too big and they cover two rows instead of one. To correct all those, I will start by clicking and dragging the rhombus symbol above the text to the right. Next, to reduce the size of the letters, I will select the whole text and move to the style panel of the contextual ribbon. It's really important to select the text before you make changes, otherwise none of them will be applied. So with the text selected, I will change the value in the size field from 2.5 to 0 0.4. Once I press Enter, the size changes accordingly. I will click on the rhombus symbol and drag to the right to adjust the frame again. From the formatting panel, I can change the appearance of the text. For example, I can change the letter's font, the color, the layer they belong to, and I can also make them bold, italic, underlined, and so on. At this point, I will make the letters italic, change the font to Calibri, the color to gray, and set the layer in which the text will belong to the zero layer. I will click inside the text box to unselect the text and get a better picture of the changes I made. Now, all I have to do is select the letters S and T and make them superscript. From the paragraph panel, I can change the justification of the text. Once I am done editing the text, I will click on Close Text Editor. The text item is finished, yet I can edit it again easily if I just double-click on it. The contextual ribbon reappeared and I can change the format or the content of the text. At this point, I want you to see the symbol that there is in the garden. The symbol shows the height of an area from zero level, but in this one the height is missing. To add the height, I will activate the multi-line text again and create a text box above the symbol's horizontal line. I will click on the symbol icon in the Insert panel and I will select the plus slash minus from the list. Then, I will type the number 0, 0.0, select what I just typed and change the font size to 0 0.15. Before I close the text editor, I should mention that in case the symbol you are searching for is not in the list, you can click on the other option. From the symbol window that appears, 
you can search the symbol you want. Once you find it, click on it, then click on Select, and finally on the Copy button. At that point, you can close the Symbols dialog window, right click in the text box, and paste the symbol you just copied. Now, I will close the text editor and I will select the text item. Then, I will right click on it and select the Move option from the menu. I will open the Snaps list, activate the insertion snap, and then close the list. Apart from blocks, the insertion snap applies to texts too. I will specify the base point on the insertion snap of the text and move it above the horizontal line of the symbol. 